Today I've got a Pentax Spotmatic SP2 that needs the shutter speed checked. Welcome to Hack a Week. <clears throat> yeah, this was an eBay find. I think I got it for 20 bucks, something like that. There's quite a few Spotmatics in various um, conditions of disrepair. This one seems to be okay. Everything works on it all right. The shutter speeds are pretty close. I checked them out. They're a little bit slow on the high end. And uh, the way these work is 1 60th of a second and below the, the, the focal plane shutter, which is just basically two curtains where they open up and they move across the uh, film back. For the slower speeds, they open up a given amount and then it's how long they stay open and then the other one closes. With 60th of a second and above, it's about how wide the gap is as it moves across the film back. So for a thousandth of a second, it's going to be really close with a tiny little slit that moves across. For a sixtieth of a second, it'll be a bigger opening that moves across. That is an adjustable part on here. It's located underneath the cover. And um, it took me a little bit of digging around and finally finding some service manuals on these. I'll post a link to where they are in the description down below. But um, I'm going to get in this and see if maybe I can tweak that shutter speed for the higher settings just a tiny bit. It's pretty close, but I'd like to get it a little bit closer. A uh, thousandth of a second, for instance, measures something like an eight hundredth of a second. That's a little bit out of acceptable range. So. Let's see what we can do with this. First order of business is to get the top cover off. Okay, trying something a little different here today. I've got an overhead angled camera shot with this nice green background. It makes uh, for a little bit easier to see things on your side of everything. I bought a better spanner um, for those little tiny uh, spanner nuts and screws. That being, for instance, like this one right here on top of the shutter speed dial, two little dots on there, and you need to have a tool that will go into those two dots and then you can rotate it. A lot of these that you can find for sale on Amazon, etc., don't go narrow enough, so I took this one and put it on my uh, vertical mill and I milled it a little bit. I took some off from it. So it's got a flat right there that allows them to get a little bit closer together. And so now I can actually get this to go narrow enough for these small spanner screws. Whereas before, right out of the box, it was not narrow enough. So I'm going to adjust it to that size and that will work for that one. Uh, so that's going to be probably the very first thing we're going to take off is that screw that's right there on the shutter speed dial. This one happens to be a right hand thread. You have to be very careful with these. Some are left hand threads and if you don't know that and you just go getting after it you could totally break it off and that would ruin your day. I've got to hold the dial as I do this. And let's get out my tray here for all my parts. I'm just going to lift this off. Actually, I'm just going to keep it as one assembly and drop it into my parts tray. Paying attention to the order that things go together because, of course, we have to put this all back together. And then this is going to lift straight up. There's a little tab right there that locates on the bottom of this. There's also another tab. So when it goes back on, you have to make sure you get that lined up right. And let's see, what's going to be next? Next, there are three set screws on the film counter dial. They're located roughly 30 some degrees apart. Um, they're a little bit offset different because it's indexed to a certain position. So these don't have to come out. They just get unscrewed part way. I learned this in a few videos ago when I was working on that K1000. And if I back those off just enough, I should be able to just lift this off. There we go. 
Now we've got a flat slot screwdriver there. Not sure if this is left or right hand thread. So let's try left. I had a feeling it might be a left hand thread and it is. Let's get that off. Set that in the tray. And now we can lift off the film counter dial, the exposure dial. Now in here we have a spanner nut. Uh, let's see if we can get a picture of that for you. You see that nut right there in the middle? There's two little slots on it. And we're going to use our spanner wrench here. I've got to readjust it a bit so that it will catch those two slots. If it'll get in there. This is another one of those, is it left, is it right hand threads. I suppose I could get out the service manual. It's left hand, just like the screw was. Now we can lift that off. And let's see what else we've got this piece that's going to lift up and off. Okay, this is like an onion. There's many layers. Now we've got three screws that need to come out. Since they aren't in the center of something, they're probably right hand thread. Yes, they are. It's a good idea when you take these things apart to just kind of keep them in groups. Makes it a little easier when it all goes back together. There's people that work on these a lot that just throw everything in a pile. I like to do it like this. Just have some kind of a tray with different compartments and then you can keep them in separate locations. This spring plate rotates either clockwise or counterclockwise. It doesn't really matter which way as long as you rotate it one way or the other. And then what happens is it comes out from underneath these little tabs and allows you to lift it off. And then we've got the film advance lever that comes off. And finally, a plastic shim comes off. Take note of the position of that. Okay, what's next? Now we've got the rewind knob. Let's go ahead and pull that up, open the back of the camera. And what we're going to do is get something in this slot right here on the rewind shaft. Um, just a suitable screwdriver that you can put in there and then twist this right hand thread. And then we can get that off. Put that in our pile. Here we have another spanner nut. By the way, if you close the back of this, it will lock. If you push that down, it'll fall inside and then you'll have fun making some kind of a tool to reach in there and pull up to open your film back so that you can get in there again. So from this point on, generally, I work with them with the back open. All right, spanner wrench. We get on this nut. holes. Again, right hand, left hand. We don't know until we carefully test it both ways. Right hand thread. things here that are going to come off. Let me just leave those like they are. Now, here's something interesting. There is a very tiny little ball bearing that lives right there in that hole. You have to be very careful that you don't lose that because it's small. It's maybe one and a half millimeters across and it just sort of sits in there. Uh, let's see if 
my screwdriver is magnetized enough. Yes, it is. That is tiny. It is really tiny. It's resting right there in the tip of that screwdriver right now. So I'm going to drop that in there. And let's see. Now we've got, basically, we're down to some screws now. There's a Phillips head screw here. There are two slotted head screws here and here. And on the Spotmatic, the other screw that holds everything on the top is hidden inside here. Uh, let's see if I can get here and get a picture for you. It's right there. You see that small slotted screw? And it's kind of captured in the uh, body of the camera, so it won't screw all the way out. So you just basically back it off till you feel it meet a little resistance. And then you go to the back. We're going to take these two screws out. head screw here, also known as a Philister head. Now let's see if I've loosened up that front screw enough to get the cover off. You'll know right away because it'll just bind up on the front. It looks like that's far enough. And then when you take it off, it's kind of an up and forward motion. off at a slight angle. And we need to push that down a little. And there we go. And that little click clunk thing you just heard is a small dowel that goes in the bottom of the shutter release. So be sure you watch for that. Let's drop that in the parts tray, set the top aside. We're going to clean all this stuff up too before we put it back together. It's pretty gross. Okay, so here we are inside the top of everything. There's a lot of stuff going on. Not as much as a more modern SLR. There's a whole lot more electronics, flexible circuit boards, all kinds of things in some of the later ones. The screws that we are after to adjust, this one is painted red. It's right there. That little screw that's painted red is the one that adjusts the high speed shutter speeds from 1 60th on up and the one on the other side right there is for the slow speeds from let's see what is it uh, 30th of a second on down so let's see i think what i need to get after first is that front one but what we need to do is uh get the shutter speed tester i built down here we're going to get you in the camera down here so you can see what's going on we're going to make some adjustments to this and see if we can get our shutter speeds a little more dialed in all right very first thing i'm going to do is get the red paint off from that tiny little set screw with some acetone let's see how this works need to get that a little more saturated the paint is there to help lock that all in place so it doesn't move after you've done the adjustment. So this one looks like it's still the factory setting. I worked on one yesterday that was definitely all screwed up. The small set screw in the middle was all buggered up. Somebody had forced it and um, totally ruined it. And that camera was not working well enough to salvage, so I basically just took it all completely apart and threw all the pieces in a box. So now I've got some spare parts. And it was a good exercise in just learning more about the uh, Spotmatic and how they're all put together. So we've got most of that off from there now. Maybe just a little bit more. <clears throat> and then... 
I'm going to see if I can get some of the some of the red stuff out of those little slots on the outer locking ring. That looks pretty good. I've got most of the paint out of there now. What I'm adjusting is the position of this lever in relation to a cam and that cam sort of looks like a nautilus shell in a way and depending on its location and where it is rotated to with the shutter speed knob determines the opening of the focal plane shutter curtain so when you set it to let's say a slower speed one curtain opens there's a slight delay based on where that cam is until the second curtain opens and then the whole thing moves across the film back so what I got to do first is get a reading here with my shutter speed detector and then we're going to loosen that small outer <clears throat> ring with this I built this this is built from an old screwdriver and it's made to make contact with that outer ring loosen it up then I can rotate the middle one and I'm thinking that a very very tiny adjustment is probably going to make a big difference so we got to just take our time with this and I do have a set of screwdrivers here that go down to very very small and let's see I've got one selected here that I think is going to do the job for that middle screw so let's get the shutter speed tester set up and get a baseline measurement and go from there okay I've got everything set up here and I've got the shutter cocked we're set at one thousandth of a second and you can see it reads one 525th that is definitely not in the ballpark let's try it again take a few samples same thing let's try one five hundredth of a second and it measures one three hundred eighteenth so yes obviously they are running slow on speeds so Let's make a minor adjustment and do another test. I'm going to hold the ring with one screwdriver. Turn that adjuster screw a little bit. And I'm going to try just a tiny bit, um, maybe an eighth of a turn. And then just gently lock it in place. and do another test with the shutter speed tester. Okay, we're set back up. Shutter is cocked one thousandth of a second. Made the adjustment. Here we go. Ha, huh, it's lower. So maybe it's got to turn the other way. From what I read, it's uh, clockwise is supposed to make it go faster. Yeah, that's definitely slower. But, you know, that could just be because we disturbed its original setting. 405. All right, let's try turning it clockwise a bit more and do another test. That's on a 500th of a second, too, so it's a little too fast. All right, let's back it off a little bit. We're getting there. All right, after another adjustment, turning it out just a tiny bit, 1 500th of a second. Ah, back down to 404. It's a very, very tricky adjustment. One five hundredth of a second after another adjustment. Ah, 496. Let's give it a few cycles. 468. 496. Let's go up to one thousandth of a second. 892. 892 again. Let's try 125th. Now that's fast. And 
And let's try a 60th. That's still fast. So I think what it's going to be is a compromise. Uh, I have read in the service manual that there are two different cams available and as they wear out there's another cam that can be installed so going to be a compromise. Okay, 1 25th of a second after some adjustment. 133, that's pretty close. What you have to bear in mind too is how are you going to use this old camera that obviously has some wear on it and I don't think I'm going to be using a lot of the 500 or 1,000th of a second speeds. So let's try to get the ones that really matter. So that's a 250th, which is reading 241. That's not too bad. Let's try a 500th. 405. Let's try 1,000th. 811. And back to a 60th is where the flash sinks. And that's 185. So I think I'm just going to leave it alone right there. That's probably the best I'm going to get this old camera to work. Let's check the slow speeds just for fun. This is a 30th. It's 124. Not too bad. 15th of a second. 113th. 8th of a second. One eighth, one fourth of a second, one fourth, half second, one half, and finally one second. Oops, went too fast. Pretty much one second. So, like I said, a bit of a compromise, but Let's go back to 125th. Close enough. Okay, now that we've got it dialed in where we want it, let's put a little dab of enamel paint on that screw. And that'll help lock it in place. A few other things to address. The lugs for the straps are a little bit loose and they are held tight by some screws right here. So before we put the cover back on, let's tighten those up. They tend to get loose over time just from stress, having the thing banging around around somebody's neck. I think we've got everything covered that we need to so we can take the film advance lever back off and basically the reverse of everything we did in the beginning and along the way back I'm going to clean up all the parts so let's go ahead and jump forward to it's all done and you don't have to put up with all this boring turning of screws and whatnot. And that's it. Right back where we started with that spanner screw. There we go. You know, the reason that I like these Spotmatics and the SP2 with the old M42 mount with the screw mount is because of the lenses. These are really cool lenses. This is the Auto Tacomar and they are 1.8 lenses. And uh, they're really, really good optics. And as they age out, they too tend to get a little yellowy. So they take really great black and whites because of that, because it almost acts like a yellow filter in there. Now there's a manual and automatic setting. And uh, the light meter works by sliding this up and that engages the light meter. And then when you look through there, the light meter is active. When you go like that, it is off. Unlike the K1000, which has an active light meter all the time and unless you have the uh, lens hood on the cap it's always active and then it's just going to drain the battery and when it drains the battery all the way down then it compromises the battery and they leak and then that's the big problem with the K1000s so 
this should be a really great camera. I'm going to load this up with some color film, take some pictures, and enjoy it now. It's a great camera. These things are really amazing pieces of Japanese engineering. The pieces and parts that are in here and uh, the engineering that went behind them is just absolutely fascinating. State-of-the-art stuff for its time. Well, I guess that wraps up another camera video. Um, I know that the electronics people, the motorcycle people, the other, you know, whatever people, I've got so many different things I do on this channel and I know there are fans of some of the other stuff that I do. Uh, I'll get back to some of that electronic stuff really soon. Um, I think I'm gonna give it a rest for a while with the camera stuff. I've got quite a few videos of that. I've had a hankering to get back to my roots of just hacking up found objects like toys. So I'm gonna go hit up some of the Goodwills and see if I can find some toys that we can hack. Turn them into like robots. Evil robots. Well, maybe not evil, but robots nonetheless. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I hope you enjoy all this camera stuff and it helps you out if you have one of these cameras and you want to do some work on it. Now you've got some guidelines. So until next time. Today I've got a Pentax Spotmatic SP2 that I need to check the sunder speed. <laughs>